So in this video here, you'll learn about different types of web hosting control panels. We're going to take a look at cPanel, Plesk, and also Direct Admin. We're going to take a look at the features, functionalities, step-by-step -step instructions, how you can actually like, find your own web hosting control panel. We're going to take a look at some of the features, what are the advantages and disadvantages for all these different control panels, and what can they be used for. It's Neil from Verpex. Let's just get into it and talk about web hosting control panels. So in web hosting, a control panel is basically just a graphical user interface or a GUI that allows website owners and also administrators to manage their hosting accounts, website files, email account, databases, and other aspects of the website hosting. So this is basically just control panels combining all the different things that we want to manage and also be admin of. The control panel provides an easy to use interface that makes it very simple for users to perform various tasks and actions related to the web hosting account without having to use the command line interface or complicated third party software. The primary purpose of a control panel in web hosting is to provide website owners, but also administrators with a centralized location, basically just for handling and managing all aspects of the web hosting business, taking care of all their accounts, website management, email management, domain management, all of these things that is basically just website hosting in general, could also be security, building and also just account management in general. So in one of the other videos on the channel and our blog post on our WordPix website, we go over some different types of web hosting services and so on that you can use also billing and client management, how you can set up that automatically and handle all of that on a simple platform. Where in this one here, we're talking about web hosting control panels, which basically just simplifies all of the management of web hosting accounts and makes it easier for users to manage their websites and also just the whole hosting environment. So it basically just combines everything into a one-stop shop where we have our control panels and can control and manage everything from there. So it provides an intuitive interface that helps users to perform complex tasks without having to be experts in both web hosting or system administration in general. We don't have to deal with the command line interface, type out commands and so on. It's really easy for normal users and pretty much everyone to be able to have these control panels and control and manage your web hosting services. So some examples of popular control panels in web hosting include cPanel, Plesk, and also Direct Admin, which we talked about in the start of the video. The choice of the control panel may vary depending on the web hosting company that you're using and also the specific hosting plan that you have signed up for. So we are also going to cover how you can actually go in and find that for your specific web host service. So you can find your control panel and play around with it so you can manage your web hosting service. So now we're going to talk about like how you can choose a web hosting control panel. And first of all, it can be a very daunting task as there's many options out there available on the market. So here are some factors that we should consider when we're choosing a web hosting control panel, because it really depends on the size of your business, the features that you're looking for and so on, and also the security cost and so on. So the main factors we should take a look at is features, use interface, compatibility, support, security, and also at the end, cost. First of all, it's important to choose a control panel that offers the features that you need to manage your website and also your hosting environment effectively. Some features to consider include like file management, how they're handling the files and so on that you want to store on your website, email management if you're using that on your website as well, database management, you most likely need that, and also security settings. So all of that, how much do you have access to, how much can you play around with, and what is the security level. So a good control panel should also have an intuitive user interface that you're familiar with and also allows you to perform tasks quickly and also efficiently and basically just makes it easy to manage and navigate around in and so on so we can do it even though you're not an expert and familiar with the web hosting space. Compatibility is also a very important factor. So the control panel that you choose should be compatible with your web hosting platform and also other software that you might be using. The next one is support. So good support is always a very important factor to take into account because sometimes we might need to support when we're choosing the control panel. So look for a vendor that provides good support has an active community where you can actually like look up, get help and so on, but it could also just be documentation for the control panel so you can look it up yourself. Another very important factor and it becomes even more important is security. So it's important to choose as a control panel that offer good security features, features like SSL certificates, firewalls and other security features that can help protect your website and also just your whole hosting environment in general. The last thing and probably one of the most important things is the cost. So definitely choose a control panel that fits your budget and also 
offers good value for your money. No business has the same situation, so it really depends on the size of your business, how much you want to do, and also the features that you want to have depending on the cost. So you always need to have this trade-off between value, features, and also the cost. Make sure that you get good value for your money when you're choosing a control panel. So let's now go step-by-step step through how you can actually like find your web hosting control panel. Go through the instructions step by step for your web hosting provider. So the method for finding your web hosting control panel will vary depending on the hosting provider that you're using. But there are some general steps that you can follow. Basically just these instructions that we're going to go through now to find your web hosting control panel. First of all, you need to check your email. So look for your email inbox or it could be in spam as well. So make sure that you check that as well. So check your spam folder for any messages from your hosting provider. Your hosting provider would have sent you an email with the login details and also just the instruction for accessing your control panel. So you can get in there and do the management on your own. Once you have found that, or you can probably just go to the website and get your login details again. So log into your hosting provider's customer dashboard. When you're in there, many hosting providers have customer portals or a dashboard where you can just log in and then manage your hosting account directly from there. So go to your hosting provider's website, look for a link labeled as control panel. Could also just be the specific software that they're using, so cPanel or Plesk. And then click on that on your customer dashboard and you will be taken to your control panel. Then you can log in using your credential providing by your host provider that you got. You can also contact your hosting provider support if you're unable to like find the control panel or if your credentials are not working, your login details and so on, they will be more than happy to help you out. So they'll be able to provide you all the login details and also the specific instruction for accessing their control panel because again, it could be different for each individual provider, but these are just some general steps that most web hosting providers have. So it's now going to talk about the different types of web hosting control panels. We know what it is now, how you can access it and so on. So what are the different types and what are the differences? Which one should you consider if your web hosting platform doesn't just have one out of the box that you can use and then customize. So there are different types of web hosting control panels available each with its own set of features, just as all the other platform softwares out there and also different functionalities. So the first control panel that we're going to talk about is a panel called cPanel. It's widely used in hosting control panels that offers a user-friendly interface. So that is also a very good feature. So it's a good interface for managing web hosting accounts. It provides a range of different features, including like the website management, email management, domain management, and also database management. And cPanel, it also allows users to manage their website files. So if you have specific files and so on, different formats, they will take care of that as well. Email accounts, databases, domains, and also security settings. So all these platforms, they pretty much have all these standard functionality and settings directly out of the box, but there might be some variations from one to another. Then we have Plesk, which is also another popular hosting control panel that offers a range of features for managing web hosting. Again, these are very similar to each other, could be some pricing differences, specific security settings and so on that you can tune on, but in general, they are pretty similar. So it also has a user-friendly interface and support multiple platforms. So this is a bit different both including Windows, but also Linux. So this could be a really important aspect if you're looking for multi-platform support, both on Windows and also Linux. It also allows you to manage your website, email account databases and domains from just a single dashboard directly in there in your control panel. Then the third one we have is Direct Admin. It is a lightweight hosting control panel that provides a range of different features. Again, we have the website management as all the other ones, email management, and also database management. These are the three essentials for all these different control panels, but it's also known for its simplicity and ease of use. So if you're not really that deep into it, if you don't have that much experience and expertise knowledge, we also have some other ones which are open source alternatives that you can take a look at, but the other ones are the three main ones and they pretty much cover all out there. Could be that your website hoster already provides one of those. We have ISP config. It's a free open source hosting control panel as well. It provides again all the range of features for managing web hosting account. It supports multiple platforms, Linux and Windows as well. Then we have virtual min. 
it is also open source hosting control panel that provides pretty much the same features for managing your web hosting account. It offers support for multiple platforms, including Linux and also BSD6. So these are just some examples of the type of hosting control panels available out there, but there's tons. And we also have more examples covered in the blog post on the Verpix website. So definitely go in and check that out. The specific control panel you choose will depend on your needs and also preferences, as I mentioned a couple of times throughout the videos. So it's a good idea to research and also compare different control panels before you choose the one that is right for you. So you don't have to act like change it over time and do the research to start with. So let's now cover some of the components in a control panel because that can act like vary depending on the specific panel and its purpose. But here are five of the common components which are pretty much out there on every single control panel, at least the ones that we have covered throughout this video. So the first one is the dashboard. There will always be a dashboard in the control panel. So the dashboard is the main screen of the control panel that provides an overview over the whole system's performance. Important metrics like disk space, bandwidth uses, and also CPU load. Could also be TPU loads and so on. So basically just all the metrics that we want to track and keep track of. So one can monitor the account usage and also performance using the dashboard directly. Then we have account management, which just allows you to manage user accounts. So if you have multiple users and so on, you can set permissions, configure security settings and so on. We have the file manager. So the file manager basically just allows you to upload, download, edit files directly within the panel. So you don't have to go inside the command line interface and so on. You can do it directly from your control panel. And then we have email management, which basically just allows you to manage your email accounts, set up email, forwarding, autoresponders, and also just configure email settings. So that could be spam filters and so on. And also it allows users to create and manage email accounts associated with their specific domain name. We have the emails, we have the dashboard, all the metrics and so on. And then at the end, we have the database management. So this component allows you to manage databases, create and modify database tables, depending on what type of database that you're using. So it also enables users to create and manage the databases associated with the website, depending on if they're using MySQL or PostgreSQL as well. So you can use all these different types of databases with your website instead of having to write the instructions or it acts like database code. So you can basically just manage your database within your control panel instead of writing code, commands and all of that if you're not familiar with databases. So we also have something called the main control panel, which is the last thing that we're going to cover in this video here. So we just have the standard control panels and then we have our domain specific domain panels. So the main control panel is basically just a web based interface that allows the main owners to easily manage their domain names. So you can easily manage your domain name settings as the main registration, expiration, transfer, and also your DNS settings and also other associated services. It's provided by the domain registers directly or the web hosting companies that you're using and is accessible through your web browser. You just need to log in and so on. So when you register a domain name, you're provided with a domain control panel that allows you to manage all the settings associated with your domain name, including the domain registration, the details, users, and so on. You can view all the registration details about your domain name. This includes the domain name, registration date, expiration date and all of that information is directly available inside your domain control panel. You also have your DNS settings in there. So users, they can manage their domain DNS settings, which includes configuring domain name servers, adding and modifying DNS records. If you want to use it with together with your emails, do some forwarding and so on. Also just handling your domains could be multiple websites and so on that you're hosting and setting up email routing as well. There's also contact information, which includes the ability to manage contact information associated with the domain name, such as the domain owner's name, email address, and mailing addresses as well. So it could also be that your domain is expiring. You can go in and renew or transfer those as well. So it could be that you want to add a new domain. You can transfer it, you can renew it. All of that is available inside your domain control panel as well. So these are all the different web hosting control panels available out there. We covered the main one we covered what is a control panel and also a domain control panel here at the end we went over three main control panels that is pretty widely used out there the most popular ones and also some alternatives some open source alternatives step-by-step -step instructions on how you can in general find your control panels with your web hosting providers so i hope that you now have a good understanding of which control panel is more suitable for you you definitely need to do the research figure out which is the best one for you. So thank you a lot for watching this video here. Definitely go in and check out the other videos on our channel and also the blog post on the Verpix website. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.